Hello and welcome to our Hangout. My name is Kristen Miller and I'm here today with Eugene Mayevsky, Principal Engineer for TE Medical. Today we're going to be talking about how TE is engineering tomorrow's medical table. Hi Eugene, welcome. Hi Kristen, nice to see you. <laughs> So to get us started, could you please tell us a little bit about your background? How did you get involved in engineering, specifically in medical devices? And what do you do at TE Connectivity? I think that goes back to my childhood. Uh, I grew up in the former Soviet Union. And uh, as growing as a kid, I think all kids, they, they like to look at things, how things work. They like to disassemble something, to take things apart, to look inside. And I wasn't uh, an exception in that regard, uh, but uh, my mother was a smart woman, so she she helped me um, with this. So she allowed me to take things apart, and she also uh, was buying me different toys that were developing uh, creativity. And at some point, she even subscribed me to a popular uh, uh, journal for kids about science and industry advancements. It's called Unitechnic in Russian, but in, um, in English it's translated as Young Technician. So a kid can become a young technician, looking at different uh, uh, devices, how they operate, or advancements in, in, in technology and science. There are, there are also stories about uh, science fiction, science fiction stories in that magazine. Interesting the section was about patents that uh, were uh, made by kids. So even children could do patents. So that was a very interesting section. Essentially, what I learned from it that if you put enough thought into something, you can come up with a nice solution. It really helped to, to get this creativity. When I uh, grew older, I went to uh, college uh, uh, to me study mechanical engineering back in Ukraine. And then when I immigrated in, in the U.S., my family and I we came to the U.S., uh, I had to study English because English is my second language and just studying it at ESL program, English second language program was a little bit boring and I thought why not to combine it with the technical uh, knowledge. So I applied for electrical engineering because electrical engineering uh, was always a mysterious field for me. If you look everywhere you see electrical devices. So the whole life is powered by electricity. So if you uh, remove electricity from our lives, uh, then we get to a primitive way of living. So I went uh, to study electrical engineering, and then I graduated with a degree uh, that em uh, with emphasis on uh, compact modeling of uh, uh, passive components fabricated for RFIC applications. And with, uh, uh, with this, uh, working in interconnects modeling field was a natural choice for me. And then at some point, uh, the opportunity to work uh, in uh, TE Medical opened up and I gladly accepted that because uh, uh, medical field is, uh, to me, is a privilege to work in that field because, uh, because of the products that uh, can uh, save uh, human life, they can improve uh, quality of life, they can help uh, doctors to do their uh, procedures better. So I, I ended up in, in medical uh, uh, company and uh, I'm happy to have this uh, privilege. As far as my work here, uh, my role is uh, to partner with customers uh, to, to develop uh, optimized uh, high-speed uh, uh, high interconnects, uh, given constraints uh, from mechanical, environmental and ergonomics factors. I uh, utilize various uh, electromagnetic simulation tools uh, to work on uh, to work with these designs. Uh, I also use uh, extensive uh, measurement capabilities that we have here, and also use measurement-based uh, modeling uh, to prevent major uh, problems with the designs. And uh, the areas uh, currently current areas that I'm working on is a uh, uh, high-speed surgical cable for high-definition uh, video applications. Uh, we call it 5 gigabit cable that can sustain harsh medical uh, environment and reprocessing uh, abuse and still support 5 gigabit data transmission. Then another area that uh, I'm working on is uh, imaging cable. 
In imaging cable, uh, we developed a cable that uh, is 40% lighter than uh, conventional ultrasound uh, uh, cable used, uh, made of uh, coaxial conductors that is used for medical ultrasound imaging. And then another area uh, that I work on is uh, interventional applications where we try to fit uh, multiple conductors in a very small diameter shaft, catheter shaft. Uh, by small, uh, as an example, I can give you some numbers like 12 French catheter body, 12 French is uh, converted to 4 millimeter diameter. We can fit 200 uh, conductors and uh, uh, to generate image inside of heart. Sounds like you're making a lot of advancements. Yes. Good. <laughs> well, I asked, um, what are the benefits for doctors and patients um, for the advancements you're making in these medical cables? Yeah, we basically always uh, respond to the functional uh, requirements uh, for new therapies and increase of uh, di uh, diagnostic uh, uh, information. In that regard, uh, these are key industry drivers for uh, the industry where patient outcome is the first priority. So what we do here, we deliver uh, precision. And the originally when the company started, the, the name of the company was Precision Interconnect. Because we really make uh, really small uh, uh, coaxial cables, and not only cables, any interconnections and connections, we, we make them on a very small uh, scale. So this allows uh, to, to get precision for the doctors. Uh, they can also see better, they can see more, and uh, as a result, they can do more. So it's better outcome for uh, patients. It's reduced cost of uh, uh, healthcare. Also, uh, it allows to do more of minimally invasive uh, surgical procedures. That is uh, very important. It allows to uh, deploy devices inside of, of the, the human body. Imagine the uh, application of uh, matrix ultrasound array. Uh, it's very common now to go to the office and uh, a pregnant woman, they get a, a video, a picture of, of their babies. So matrix array used in such uh, imaging uh, has, a mod uh, has thousands of uh, piezo uh, piezoelectric crystals in it. So we have to provide uh, a cable to our OEMs to, to be able to get reliable connection between that uh, uh, ultrasound uh, crystal and the system to get this uh, nice image. Imagine volumetric imaging of uh, organs, moving organs inside of the human body, uh, uh, blood, uh, uh, flowing blood, or baby in mother's womb. So this this what enables uh, what is enabled by by our products. And then if we think of surgical applications, in surgical applications, uh, we uh, this. Bandwidth, higher bandwidth of the cable allows for better resolution. And better resolution is uh, uh, helping uh, physicians to get a more immersive uh, video uh, picture, video image of, uh, of the organs uh, under surgery. So all of these uh, uh, products that we build, they result in better outcome for patients. Great, sounds like it. So I'm sure uh, these products have to survive in very harsh medical environments. Um, so what are you doing to test these cables before they go out to the customer? Uh, here at T Medical, we have uh, extensive uh, in-lab uh, testing capabilities. And when we uh, look at, uh, at any design, we, we look at that in uh, functional as functional requirements, we look at electrical requirements, mechanical requirements, uh, 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 reprocessing, ergonomics. We, we look at the design from all aspects. And as far as the testing, uh, I work in R&D and uh, we first analyze the functional, uh, functional requirements uh, for the cable. We want to make sure that uh, we ask many questions. Because when we do testing, we want to replicate the same conditions that, that, uh, that are available at the customer side, at the end customer side. So that's, that's very important for us. And then we develop concept. 
based on that input from the customer, we develop a concept, and then we test that concept with uh, electromagnetic uh, simulation tools, or maybe other tools, computational tools. So we, we look at this uh, uh, from a uh, uh, theoretical perspective, how it will work. Then we build a prototype. When we build a prototype, uh, we also use uh, uh, extensive analysis tools. Usually we perform measurements, and then we can do measurement-based modeling to emulate uh, the environment uh, that uh, customers are using. And that's only an electrical perspective. After we are satisfied with the cable, how it works electrically, then we move to mechanical uh, evaluation. So we, we do uh, different tests, including uh, tensile, cable durability, flex uh, durability test, and, and gurney test on the cable. Then uh, we also look at uh, reprocessing capabilities. How the cable will sustain this harsh reprocessing, uh, uh, such as decontamination, sterilization, uh, post-processing durability. Then we look at ergonomics. If the cable is limp, if it's lightweight, if it's, uh, uh, it has enough of uh, torque resistance, it's, if its flexibility is sufficient, limpness is good. So then we finish it with uh, uh, electrical testing. When we were developing this uh, 5 gigabit uh, cable, uh, w when we first came, came up with a reliable electrical design, and uh, we, we wanted to evaluate it, how it performs uh, during all of this uh, uh, mechanical and uh, reprocessing abuse. So we run, uh, uh, after electrical test, we uh, subjected it to autoclave cycling multiple autoclave cycling that em emulated uh, uh, real environment. So uh, 1,000 cycles in, in that autoclave. Autoclave because it gives the highest uh, temperature uh, uh, load on, on the cable. Then after uh, we, done, uh, we were done with this, we, uh, we flexed it. And uh, as flexing, we went to uh, 500, uh, fi 500,000 uh, flex cycles on the cable. Then we measured it again, and the cable was still performing uh, well as intended. So it was able to, was capable of supporting five, five gigabit data transmission through uh, 10 feet long link. And then uh, uh, for comparison, uh, we went to Fryson, uh, bought off the shelf consumer electronics cable and tried to run uh, just part of this test. And I can tell you, only, only after a few uh, flex cycles, this uh, cable, it was uh, specifically a closed data rate. It was a, a three, uh, USB 3.0 cable. After only 100,000 uh, cycles, the performance degraded uh, so much that there was no point to continue with the test. This is normally what, what we do when we approach any design that, that, that uh, we get uh, from the customers. Thanks, Eugene. So what are the other problems you're trying to solve with the 5 gigabit cable and the company EX cable? OK. Uh, what other problems? Yeah, the, uh, we design uh, products based on the projection of the market need. So we always want to uh, remain ahead, uh, ahead of the curve. And uh, we partner with our customers uh, to, understand, to understand their roadmaps and to, uh, to be ready when the technology arrives. So when we uh, looked at the 5 gigabit uh, cable project, uh, it was uh, scoped after we examined uh, trends in uh, high definition video. And then uh, it's, it goes uh, similar to consumer electronics uh, market, but it, it's a little bit delayed. So after we examine this uh, consumer uh, electronics market and also trends in, in uh, medical markets for surgical applications, we define the goal of uh, getting this, uh, this five, uh, uh, five gigabit on time. And now uh, when the customers need it, so we, we have the solution of, of, uh, of uh, 5 gigabit uh, uh, cable. For EX uh, cable, we investigated uh, alternative materials uh, to improve uh, 
ergonomics and cost of, of the cable uh, without uh, without trading off the image performance so we wanted to get the same uh, quality uh, image but uh, uh, for the cable that is lighter and for the cable that uh, perhaps even cost less and and we came uh, came up with a really good solution I can show you a couple of samples so these are uh, ultrasound cables so you can see uh, this these cables are using typical uh, medical ultrasound imaging application and each of these cables they have more than 100 conductors in this cable we have uh, 128 conductors in this cable is 164 so in this cable we have uh, on my right uh, on this cable we have 50% uh, uh, more conductors than in this cable but if you compare the outer diameter of these cables, this cable is smaller. And you cannot, of course, uh, sense the weight of the cables, but this cable is 40% lighter than this cable. So for smaller dimensions, for lighter cables, we have more conductor density in, in the cable body. So it's easier on the sonographer, sonographer's hand. Uh, I, I saw uh, people like sonographers in, in medical offices and I always like to ask them questions, what's the hardest part for them? And it appears that the hardest part is actually to move their hand all, all day long. So, because they develop strain. And, and typically they say uh, that five or six patients a day is a lot for them because, because it puts enough strain for the hand. So when we develop cable that is uh, 40% 40 lighter and is limper than conventional cable, uh, it gives significant benefit to the end user uh, of that cable. Great. Sounds like you're solving a lot of challenges at the medical device that you are throwing your way, right? Right. right. Yep. So, what other advancements are you seeing in team medical right now that are really exciting for you? Uh, there, there are many uh, advancements. I think the the, uh, the most exciting thing is uh, is essentially uh, acquisition that that we had. We have uh, uh, we acquired T connectivity acquired two two companies. One is a measurement specialties. Another one is advanced care. So measurement specialties is a. Uh, uh, is a expert is a expert in sensor business so they build a sensor and sensor uh, sensor based systems and they have a plethora of uh, sensors for medical applications that could be mounted on on medical devices uh, and be used to monitor uh, inside uh, of the human body inside and outside so a clinician can get a complete uh, picture of what's going on uh, in the in the human body and then on the other hand we had acquisition of advanced cat which is uh, the company that uh, that is a leading source of uh, advanced catheter systems and the company combines best-in-class uh, technologies with the uh, uh, industry leading uh, expertise in life-saving devices so we have expertise in catheters we have expertise in uh, sensors and as T Medical, we have great expertise in miniature uh, in miniature uh, cables. I have a couple samples to show, actually, like just just to appreciate the sizes. Like uh, I don't know if you can see it from here, but uh, these are different sizes of uh, twisted pairs, and the constructions is uh, is typical for the twisted pair. In twisted pair, we have. Uh, 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 center conductors with uh, extruded uh, or some other dielectric and then we have uh, them twisted and then we have uh, shielding and then we have jacket so that's the typical uh, cons uh, construction for any twisted pair that is available on the market with some variations so uh, on this display I have various cables and on the bottom I have the size of uh, conventional uh, twisted pair that is used in consumer electronics but then uh, on the top I have uh, actually close to it for comparison it's even hard to see uh, there is a cable that is used uh, for uh, 
medical applications. And this is very, very small, uh, small cable. It's a, it's a OD is a, a about a, a four thousandths of an inch. So it's essentially it's smaller than a human hair. And this is what what, what could be used to integrate these uh, advanced catheter bodies uh, with our cables and with those sensors. Now, uh, if you think of it, it's not a discrete. Uh, uh, discrete, uh, uh, discrete devices anymore. Not discrete devices anymore. But the cable becomes a, a system that uh, that opens up uh, unique uh, opportunities uh, for integration and miniaturization. I think this is what's the most exciting uh, for me. So, how do you see the future of medicine evolving with these new advances that you're working on? I think uh, in the past uh, we had constraints with uh, compartmentalized uh, uh, supply chain. So when we have different uh, suppliers su uh, supplying different parts, then we uh, take these parts and uh, designers, they try to figure out what needs to go together. But uh, uh, that was in the past with this uh, measurement specialties, uh, specialties and uh, advanced catheter under one roof. Uh, is us. We, we, we can expand this these capabilities uh, and we can move this uh, cable integration to a new level because we can put more components on the cable and as I said the cable becomes a now advanced device that allows for greater connectivity. So essentially in the past we were connecting system to the device. System at the proximal end, device at the distal end. But now we are connecting, uh, let's say, a physician, we are connecting to a patient. And not only on the outside of the patient, but we connect a, a physician uh, uh, to the inside organs or inside of the organs in the human body. Because uh, uh, devices get smaller, you can get deeper in the body, and you can, uh, you can essentially uh, see more. So that would allow uh, doctors uh, actually to have more options, and uh, the designers, they will support uh, all of their ideas because now it, it will be much easier to, to implement these ideas. That's what I, what, what I foresee, that uh, I think we, we will get more minimally invasive uh, medical procedures in the market based on, based on these uh, advancements. Also, we will see better outcomes for the patients. and. Uh, life expectancy of the patients, or of people actually, of the population will be increased. Thanks Eugene, Thank sounds you. incredible. Thank I'd like you. to take some time for any live questions, if you could type in your questions to the box um, in your viewer window. Um, while we're waiting for some questions, Eugene, is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Maybe uh, show us what you have down behind you as far as the full catheter system? Um, let me think a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, I showed you the samples, which is uh, uh, which is nice. Maybe uh, like a little bit about challenges that that we have. I think the greatest uh, challenge is always uh, for us to find the right balance, to write the the right uh, to find the right balance uh, when when we uh, design. Uh, uh, products or cable or interconnect system. We look inside of the human human heart, what is the right uh, balance uh, uh, between uh, signal fidelity, signal density, or uh, device flexibility versus cost. So you have to remember that something that is used inside of the body is usually it's a single use uh, device. So we have to consider all of these factors to to come up with the product that meets uh, all expectations from, from our customer. And then uh, 5 gigabit uh, cable uh, used for surgical video applications. It has to, we have to find a balance uh, to support this immersive video. We have to find balance between signal bandwidth versus uh, signal ergonomics versus uh, 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 sterilization compatibility versus its durability. So this is the biggest challenge. 
Thanks, Eugene. We didn't have any questions come in, um, but I'd like to thank you again for your time today. And for those watching, you can visit te.com slash medical for more information on the products that Eugene is covering today. Thanks again, Eugene. You're welcome, Kristen. It was my pleasure to, to talk today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for listening, for listening to